Assalamualaikum and very good day. So this is the continuation uh, for the superposition theorem for AC circuit. So this is part two. Okay, in the previous video, I have explained and I actually have uh, in introduced you about what is the superposition theorem for AC circuit. And then, so this is actually a, a continuation where we can, from this circuit, we will see um, the advantages of using superposition theorem. Okay, so as you can see here, the superposition, this circuit contains two different voltage source. The, the one is actually AC source with a function of stand cost 5T, where here, the, as you may recall, the, ohm, the, the radian, the angular frequency is 5 radian per second. Okay, so this is the information that we can get from this voltage source with the V max is 10 volt. Okay, and another source is a DC source which is uh, the value is 5 volt. So we cannot uh, actually, even though this circuit is simple, only consisted only one loop, okay? We cannot simply use um, the simple uh, basic Ohm's law to uh, analyze this circuit. Why? Because the problem is lies on the value of the reactance of the inductor here. So what? should be the value of XL here, the value of the induct reactance, because we know that the reactance of the inductor is depends on the, so this one J, J, is depends on the omega multiplied with the inductor value. So right now, the omega for the, so right now this circuit consisted two different source where the AC source have an omega of 5 radian per second. Why? For the DC source is a constant DC source is a constant waveform, meaning that the omega for the DC is actually zero. There is no angular, uh, angular velocity for the DC voltage. Okay, so right now, we have two different omega right now. So we don't, so which, should actually the inductor use whether it is five radian per second or zero. So that is the complexity. That is where um, the superposition theorem comes in a handy form. Okay. So how to solve this circuit is very simple if you are using the superposition theorem. The first is actually we need to follow the step of the superposition. So the step, the first step of the superposition is to kill either one. Okay, let's say um, for this circuit, um, let's say I kill the VDC first. Kill VDC. So kill VDC meaning that VDC is set to zero. So this one we already should know that when DC is set to zero, it is actually a short circuit okay and your circuit will become like this okay and then convert into a phaser so this one will become um, 10 with an angle of zero okay and then you have the resistor with the value of one ohm and right now this is this is short circuit, okay? So your XL right now is, right now only the AC source is on, so we use the radian, the omega for the AC source, which is five. So five multiply with the Henry value, with the inductor value, which is one Henry. So this one will become, we need that this one will be a positive J5 ohm, okay? For example, maybe this um, circuit wants you to, to actually calculate Ix here, okay? So 
from here you can calculate your ix prime so this is ix prime so you can just calculate ix prime just v over uh, 1 plus j5 as simple as that okay then the next step is to kill to to kill the ac source so this is the first the second kill ac source and turn on vdc okay turn on vdc so meaning that your circuit will be um, so then kill meaning that your VAC will be short circuit and then you have a resistor here 1 ohm okay and then you turn on back the VDC which is uh, VDC is 5 volt okay and then right now what is the value of the reactance of the inductor here okay so right now the omega is zero radian per second okay so if you substitute this omega l so this one is zero multiply with one henry so meaning that it is actually a zero ohm so we need that for at dc circuit the inductor is short circuit so okay short circuit so this is actually the circuit when only dc when the only dc voltage is turned on so you can calculate this one ix double prime and we continue with the uh, uh, basic ohm's law so for example this one so this one is current I1, so we always assume that the current we always entering the positive terminal of the resistor here. So your I1 should be um, uh, V over 1 ohm, so which is 5 volt over 1 ohm. So this one is 5 volt, and sorry, 5 ampere. Okay, but we know that I1 is negative if it's actually uh, negative of Ix. So your Ix should be negative 5 ampere. Okay, so DC1 is Ix double prime, which is negative 5 ampere. And finally, the answer is uh, you need to sum up meaning that ix is the tot is the assumption of ix prime because of the ac source itself and ix x double prime so this one will be for example ix prime uh, i we solve it okay so this we are using calculator so 10 volt with an angle of 0 or over 1 plus 5 i okay so this one in polar form you will have 1.96 with an angle of uh, negative 78 point uh, 0.7 degrees okay So this one, not 1.96 with an angle of negative 78.7 uh, degrees. Okay, uh, minus 5 ampere. So in time domain, so this is actually in phaser. And if you want to convert into time domain okay so for the ac circuit you need, just need to follow the source you need to follow the original source so the original source is in cost term and the omega is five so just write down so meaning that your ix 
omega t is 1.96 the magnitude the function is cos because we follow the ac voltage source uh, with an uh, omega is 5 t minus 78.7 degrees minus 5 so this is actually the function so it consists of ac current and dc current okay so thank you very much that's all for uh, the lesson and we may, may discuss uh, the maybe several examples thank you very much